Welcome, and here are solutions to homework set number 13 for ECE 111. This homework looks at solving nonlinear circuits, specifically circuits with diodes. And the same thing that we've done before, current loops, voltage nodes, still works. Solving n equations, n unknowns, still works. But these are nonlinear equations. So we're going to need to use MATLAB and a function called fminsearch to solve them. Now the first problem is to write the equations. That's kind of all important. If you don't get the equations right, the answer is not going to be right. This is typically what tests look like in 321 as well. On the test, I'll ask you to write the equations. You won't have ability to solve them on the test, but you'll be able to get the equations. So in this case, I've got diodes. Those are these guys. And the VI characteristic for diode looks like this. If I take the voltage across the diode, and the current. It's exponential in nature. So the current's basically zero, then it shoots up. That's this equation. Or this one right here, exponential. And the definition of the voltage is if I have a diode, the voltage is defined as anode to cathode. So that's VD. So for this circuit, I first want to write I'm going to guess the voltages V0, V1, V2, V3, V4. What voltages make the currents balance? The first step is to find the currents through the diodes. So this diode, athode, anode to cathode, is this way. So it's going to be your diode equation, where VD1 is V0 minus V1. For diode 2, anode to cathode, VD2 is V2 minus V1. Diode 3, anode to cathode, is V3 minus V4. So that sets up the diode equations. And what they look like is this. It's the same equation we had before, just substituting the voltage across the diode, anode to cathode. And these parameters, the 0.038, 7.7, those are parameters for the diode. Each diode is slightly different. Uh, these are 1N, 1N 4004 diodes with these two parameters. We'll get to that when we get to Circuit Lab, but that just defines how the diode behaves. Uh, the second part is write the node equations. So just like we did before for conservation of current, the currents have to add to zero. So at node one, the current left, current down, current right equals zero. The current left is just minus ID1. So I know that minus ID1, current down is V1 minus V3 over 100. Current right is minus ID2. That's zero. Actually, one more equation. Uh, at node zero, V0 equals 10. Um, at node 2. Let's do that one in green. At node 2, current left, current down, current right equals 0. Current left is plus ID2. Current down is V2 minus V4 over 200. And it's the voltage across this dot, that resistor divided by 200. And this current is V2 minus 0 over 300. At node 3, uh, pick a color, light blue. Current up, current down, current left equals 0. So at node 3, V3 minus V1 over 100 plus the current left. V3 over 400 plus the current down, ID3, is 0. And the last equation, um, purple. Current up, current down, current right equals 0. At node 4, that's minus ID3, that's the current up, plus V4 minus V2 
over 200 plus v4 over 500 equals 0. So there I've got seven equations, well, four equations, four unknowns, plus the currents. And those simplify to this. So those would be my equations. To solve, again, these are nonlinear equations. In theory, I've got four equations, four unknowns. I'm going to guess v1, v2, v3, v4, and these have to balance where the current through the diodes are defined by these equations. Uh, find those voltages. Well, that's actually really hard to do since these are nonlinear. This is where MATLAB comes into play. In MATLAB, I can write a function. I called it homework 13, completely original name. Uh, this I can't run. It's a function. If I try to run it, I'll get an error in MATLAB uh, saying, uh, what are you trying to do? This is a function. It's not a main routine. I can call it from the main routine and I have to pass the parameters. I've got to tell it what is v1, v2, v3, v4. So like we say, what is homework 13? It says, I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't recognize the function, but I don't know what z is. I need to pass it. So what I could do is tell it, I think the voltages are one, two, three, four volts. Am I right? And it goes through here, calculates the currents, finds the current imbalance, returns the sum squared of the current imbalances, and then displays the voltages and the log base 10 of my error. And it says, that was a really bad guess. The sum squared error is 10 to the 184th. So let's try another guess. Let's try four, three, two, one. And that was better. I'm only off by 10 to the 116th. Let's try 8421. Uh, that's still better. You can guess, guess again, guess again. Or this function called fmin search. Let's move this out of the way. I'm going to tell it minimize this function. Here's my initial guess. And it runs. It's trying to figure out what the voltages are. The last column is kind of what I care about. That's the log base 10 to the error. It's getting better, getting better. The first four columns are V1, V2, V3, V4. And it's trying. It's kind of struggling because my initial guess was so bad. Another way to come up with the initial guess is kind of cheat. Solve in circuit lab and then plug in the voltages you found in circuit lab. And this one, you know the answer is not right. The voltages won't be negative. But it's, again, a hard nonlinear problem. It's trying. Well, now it's been getting better. It takes it a while again because my initial guess was so bad. Now I'm at 10 to the minus 9 for the error, 10 to the minus 10, 10 to the minus 11. And maybe that's the answer. Maybe not. So what I can do is I'm going to pass to it the result of the previous guess. Picking up where you left off, can I do better? When fmin search kicks out, it's either because it found the solution or just hit the maximum number of iterations. I don't really know which one it was, but that's pretty much the same answer. Error is 10 to the minus 13. That's probably the voltages. So that's solving four equations, four unknowns. That's your V1, V2, V3, V4. which is the same thing I got before. Uh, in circuit lab, I can build the circuit and then simulate it. So circuit lab is a really nice, friendly program. It's a drag and drop program we've used a couple times. So like here's my voltage source. That'll be my 10 volt source. Here's the first diode. I'm not going to do the whole circuit, but kind of give the idea behind it. Um, I forgot what the circuit was. 
resistor, diode, resistor. I'll just do that part. So I've got a resistor, diode, resistor. Uh, you have to give it a ground. Without a ground reference, uh, voltages don't really make sense. Then kind of drag and drop. Again, this isn't the entire circuit. I'm just going to want to show you Circuit Lab. You can then add these labels. This is kind of useful later on. And that was a V0. V1, V3, V4. Uh, double click on that. This is a 10 volt source. I called it V0. That was 100 ohms, 200 ohms. If we double click on the diode, these are the diodes that they have in Circuit Lab. The one we're using is the 4004 diode, and this is the reverse saturation current, uh, 7.69 times 10 to the minus 11. That's where that number came from on problem one. And the second number, this number times Boltzmann's constant, which is 0 0.026, is the 0 0.038. Those two parameters define the diode, and each one is slightly different. Okay, make a liar out of me. Each one's slightly different. There we go. They're slightly different. Depends upon the diode you're using. We're using a 4004. So when I go down to simulate, oops, make it smaller so you can see it. I'll go under simulate. Tell it I want to add expressions. I want to notice the voltage at V0, V1, V3, V4. It's all. What Circuit Lab just did is what we just did in MATLAB. It tries to solve your nonlinear equations. What voltages make the currents balance? For the diodes, they have that exponential relationship. For the resistors, V equals IR. Um, at any point, the current in has to equal current out. What voltages make the currents balance? And it came up with these voltages. If you do it for the whole circuit, these are the voltages Circuit Lab comes up with. And just for fun, if you want to know the current through the diode, just click on the left side of the diode, and it'll tell you what those currents are as well, if you wanted to know. And if you compare Circuit Lab to what we calculated, they're close, not exactly the same. And the Circuit Lab model includes a couple more parameters like a series resistance. I'll double click on this. This also includes a small resistance in series. Uh, let's see some capacitance, a slightly more accurate model, slightly more complicated model. But they're close, and that's typical in electronics. When you calculate the answers, you're going to get slightly different answers than Circuit Lab. They ought to be close, but they will be slightly different. If I went into the lab and built it, I'll get a third answer. Again, it'll be close, but slightly different. Uh, that's because all models are imperfect. So calculated uses one model, Circuit Lab uses another model. The real answer is the hardware. Um, so in electronics, if you get exactly the same answer all three times, I know you didn't do the homework. If they're close, but slightly different, then you probably did it right. Calculation will be slightly different than simulation, will be slightly different than measurement. And that's kind of what you do in circuits or electronics one. It's similar to what we did before. Again, we're using the same tricks we did before. I've got current loops, voltage nodes, conservation of current, conservation of voltage. The trick we do, if I can write n equations for n unknowns, I can solve. The catch, however, these are nonlinear equations. To solve nonlinear equations, that's where F and search and MATLAB come to the rescue. I can write a function in MATLAB, 
and then minimize it using fbin search and solve my four equations for unknowns. So that's homework set number 13 for ECE 111.